So, hello uh, and welcome again. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to make uh, this uh, microscope here, it's this Lego microscope. It's uh, a pretty simple construction, but it's uh, it works surprisingly well. Um, yeah, and I'm going to show you how, how to build it. Um, well, actually, I'm going to take this one apart so that you actually can see how, um, how I made it. Um, this uh, microscope here um, can have uh, is right now magnifying 40, 40 times, but if you attach a, a larger um, objective, then it can magnify up to a hundred times. Okay. Um, so, uh, and before I actually tell you how uh, to build it, um, I have to tell you some dimensions first because that's a little bit important as well. So I prepared a little. Um, drawing over here um, on how the microscope um, has to, the, the distances of, of the microscope here, okay? So first of all, what we have is, is down here we have the objective, okay? So that's this uh, thing over here, this uh, part over here. And uh, what is important is, is that uh, from the bottom of the tube, so this is the tube here, um, to the specimen slide, um, this has to be 45 millimeters. Um, and the tube uh, length is 160 millimeters. And this is the reason why there is on the objective over here a small 160, because this is the 160 millimeter standard. Um, but the 160 does not refer now to the total length of the tube, but actually to the distance uh, where, it creates the, where the objective creates the image. And this image is inside the tube. So we're probably gonna make the tube a little bit longer than 160 millimeters or about the same size. Um, but the image itself is actually made still inside the tube. And out here, um, at the top here we have the ocular or also known as the eyepiece um, and this is the part that you look through okay and uh, the thing is now the following that this microscope that I'm going to show you um, even allows you to focus uh, by moving the, um, the ocular in and out a little bit and I'm going to show you how to do that okay it's not the most perfect way to focus but it works surprisingly well and if you keep uh, the distance over here 45 millimeters constant um, then yeah, you can. You don't have to refocus a lot uh, at all. Okay, so I'm going to show you now how this uh, actually works by taking apart the microscope um, over here. Well, no, I'm not going to do this yet. First of all, I'm uh, because you might not believe me that it actually works. I'm going to show you now a couple of pictures first, um, and I took the pictures with my mobile phone uh, through the eyepiece. So let's uh, have a look at the pictures first. So this, uh, yeah, and you can actually see that uh, they work quite well. Now these pictures here are um, under 40 uh, X total magnification. And the next uh, pictures, these pictures here are now taken at a total magnification of 100 X. I would not go higher than 100 X because uh, then uh, it's really difficult because then you have to really, it's almost impossible to refocus then, okay? So uh, back uh, to the microscope. Now, how did I actually do that? Um, so first of all, what I've done over here is, is you need to film canisters. And I know that they have been popular uh, quite some time ago. Uh, now you have to uh, buy them over eBay um, and, uh, or you maybe have some somewhere in, in your cellar. And uh, so these are the film canisters uh, were in the good old days before the digital age, they had the film, um, yeah, rolls of film in here. And what I have done is the following. Um, I have uh, cut out a hole here and I actually bend it in um, like this. And uh, then I could attach uh, the eyepiece and I could move it in and then it stays in there. Um, actually, these uh, things actually sometimes even locked in so that it was not the, not possible to take the eyepiece out again. And that was also actually uh, quite okay because uh, then um, it was a little bit more stable. So that is uh, essentially the eyepiece. Um, and uh, I can insert the eyepiece uh, now here in front and uh, I can also move it in and out. Okay, and so that is how I was uh, I'm actually focusing. Yeah, and it, it works fine. And uh, the actual main part here is the tube. And now for this, I've got to take this apart. And what you can see down here is the objective, okay? And also the objective, this is a 4X objective. I mounted this objective also um, on a film canister, okay? Now, how did I do that? This was a little bit of delicate work. Um, actually, you can screw it in like this. And I used a compass and a really very carefully uh, cut out um, a round hole here, okay? Just of the right size, a little bit smaller so that you can actually screw it in. And uh, yeah, at the same time, you can also, of course, uh, attach a, a slightly uh, larger objective. This one is now a 10X objective, okay? Which gives me a total magnification of 100X because the eyepiece also magnifies 10 times, okay? Yeah, so that's now I got the other one, right? So that's how it works. Actually thinking about it, it might be a good idea actually to take a second canister um, yeah, so that you don't have to screw it in and all, all the time. Um, however, I would highly recommend, 
highly recommend uh, um, that you uh, actually do this with the 4x objective uh, to get low magnification because you have a much bigger depth of field and you don't have to refocus as much and um, there's also a larger distance between the objective and the specimen so you can also look at larger objectives it's simply easier okay uh, to uh, use the lower magnifications and you can also see quite a lot so 40x is not that little okay so um, I'm gonna just put this down over here and now I'm actually gonna show you how I made this Lego microscope and how many layers of Lego bricks do I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, I have 14 layers and uh, what I have done is the following, I've used uh, those uh, 4 by 2 bricks okay those 4 by 2 and I put them together in such a way that I have a very nice little um, square in here and this is uh, just enough uh, to accept yeah the the film canister yeah, you have to squeeze the film canister together a little bit but that's okay okay um, and then essentially how you design the whole the bottom part here is not really mm, yeah it's up for you to your own creativity what I've done simply is I've simply constructed it like this and I also uh, put a little thing guide in here so that the, the slide uh, the stage uh, can slide in and out okay having said that um, it is not really wide enough uh, to allow the slide to be moved back and forth to, uh, to the side so I have I'm putting in the slide um, differently um, where's the slide okay I got a slide over here so it's you see there's not a lot of, uh, it's, it's not a lot of space here okay um, so um, I'm putting in the slide like this okay and then you can move it around in all possible directions you can move it in left and right and then you can move it like this okay um so what about the light source yeah well the light source that's my light source okay um i'm just i'm just using this uh this type of lamp i just put it in here and that's fine um i've also done the following um i'll show you over here um i have over here um also something i put an led over here and i pull put a little switch over here and if you uh you can also turn it on and off and this can also be mounted um, instead of the this can, oh, I can pick it up again this can also be mounted here you can't see it if I put it on the wrong side this can also be attached uh, in here um, on, on the bottom I've got a battery over here okay um, and you have to also I didn't even solder much I see I get you uh, I actually wrapped the, the, the wires around only but what you do is you need a resistor as well otherwise you're gonna break the you're gonna break the the LED but this one is not quite as bright um, as the other one because it's only it's got three volts and the other thing one I think it has uh, three batteries so it's a uh, yeah, one battery more you know so that's a little bit more stronger okay so that is the my preferred one and yeah <clears throat> I'm just gonna show you a little bit now how I actually made this um, over here you can actually see that uh, I arranged the Lego bricks in such a way that yeah there's always one one over here the other one over here and there's one over here and one over here okay and on the next layer I, I always uh, overlapped it so that uh, it's a stable design okay and uh, then yeah of course and then you kind of put this whole thing in here okay um, you put the whole the other one at the top and then um, the, comes the delicate part. We put it back again and I have to lift it up again. And the delicate part is the following. Is, is that um, if the distance over here between the, the objective and the specimen, if this, this distance is not right, okay, then no amount of refocusing over here is going to give you a sharp image. That is really important. This distance down here is more important than this distance up here. Because you have to move this, uh, if you move it only a little bit down here, you change the focus a lot. Okay, um, so if you don't see anything, you have to make you have to keep this constant, and you just try moving around the the uh, the objective down here a little bit so that uh, you can actually get a, until you get a clear picture, um, and then you can do the fine focus by moving this one up and down. Okay, um, and then once you got the focus, I would just probably leave it as it is, and then simply look at a different slide. Okay, so that is uh, that is essentially the thing. Now, having said that, there's another thing that you might uh, realize very quickly that the contrast that this microscope delivers is not quite as high as the contrast of the other microscopes. It looks a little bit, um, yeah, um, uh, or too bright. And one of the reasons is is that if you take this out and if you have a uh, lamp beneath it, the side of the plastic here are shiny and it's also white. So this means there's a lot of uh, internal light reflection. Um, so what you might want to try, I have not tried this yet, but what you might want to try is you might want to put some black paper in here to absorb the light a little bit. Um, and I think that even black uh, Lego pieces, even they are shiny, okay? So even they reflect light. So put some kind of a, I don't know, yeah, 
rough black uh, paper in here which uh, absorbs uh, the light so that there is less internal light reflection and it should give you a slightly better contrast. But I mean, it does work quite well, okay? So I think that's a quite a nice uh, weekend project. And yeah, as I said, you can be creative how you design the whole part down here. Um, I'd simply put it, uh, yeah, I put those uh, smooth Lego pieces in here so that I can put the stage in and out easily, okay? Um, I've also tried a few other things. Let me get this over here. That's, this is the box where I keep all my, the pieces for the Lego microscope. I tried to, uh, I glued uh, a, a piece of plywood um, here on the Lego pieces using um, a glue gun, a hot glue, um, and uh, so that I can attach uh, the objective, okay? Um, that is was my intention. However, this is uh, has a is not going to work <laughs> because I cannot uh, move this in thing in and out. So I cannot focus this. So the distance has to be quite uh, accurate and precise, okay? Um, so this is actually probably not the best solution. It also works if you yeah, if you kind of uh, adjust the distance uh, by not screwing it in completely. But um, I, I like this system with the, the with the film canisters more because you have a more flexibility in actually moving the objective in and out. But I, that's also one of the things I tried. And another thing that I tried is over here. This was a failed attempt. <laughs> I tried to drill in some holes into this Lego piece uh, because I wanted to connect uh, uh, different magnifications in here, and then I wanted to have a sliding system. Okay. Uh, but uh, I gave up on this, not really because it broke out. I mean, I could have just then used a different Lego piece, but because this one has the same problem as the other one, I, I cannot move the objective in and out so easily. Okay, so that is a little bit uh, it was the main the main problem here, uh, because uh, the focusing, um, while it can be done using the eyepiece, as I already mentioned, that you have to move this uh, relatively far, and if the focus is off. If the distance is wrong at the objective, then no amount of refocusing is going to actually uh, bring it back into focus with using the eyepiece. Okay, so that is the reason why I actually prefer this uh, the film canister system. Well, what else do I have? Yeah, I, I tried all sorts of things here. This was not very stable, okay, because the Lego pieces are too thin and too small. Yeah. And yeah, by the way, this one might be also an interesting idea. I did. Uh, I left out um, over here um, a few uh, Lego pieces. Um, because this way I can actually reach in with a finger to move the uh, film canister to move the film canister in and out. Okay, so this is the reason why I did not uh, build it all the way down. Okay, so I can now grab the film canister and I can carefully move it in and out and focus this way. The question is, of course, now where can you get these objectives and uh, the eyepieces from? Well, um, of course, you would like to buy them. Uh, relatively cheaply. Um, it can be used, of course, uh, as long as they're intact, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, but uh, I bought these um, uh, over eBay um, and I found a, a, a person who basically sold them and that's where I bought them and I uh, got them relatively cheaply. Um, having said relatively cheaply does not automatically mean they're cheap, okay? Uh, but those 4X eyepieces, uh, eyepieces? Uh, 4x objectives are of course cheaper than let's say the 10x objective so i would pro i would definitely go for with the 4x first um and uh, yeah they shouldn't uh, cost uh, all too much um make sure that you get uh, those with a 160 millimeter standard and not infinity objectives uh, infinity objectives are way more expensive and they work differently you cannot simply connect it like this and the second thing is, is make also sure that you don't buy any um, yeah, plan objectives or apochromatic objectives and so on uh, because they're quite expensive. Uh, I mean, let's be very honest. If you look at the price and if you get it reasonably low price, then you probably know, then they're probably going to be standard um, achromatic 160 millimeter objectives. Okay. So that is uh, the, yeah, that's simply the, the, the suggestion that I would like to make here. Yeah, and if you want to really get carried away, you can take out uh, the the eyepiece and you can insert uh, a USB microscope camera. Yeah, that is, uh, and then you can watch uh, the pictures uh, um, under the computer. Okay, so let's have a look at this as well. Well, the camera does wiggle around a little bit. It's not very stable. 
Um, but uh, you can see that it does work um, and uh, I'm right now trying to hold my camera with uh, one hand and I'm trying to extend, change the slides with the other hand so therefore the picture is not quite stable right now. But uh, I think uh, you can also see that uh, when I exchange the slides I do not need to refocus a lot. Uh, so uh, that is uh, the advantage of using a relatively low magnification uh, because then the depth of field is also much higher and uh, you do not need to refocus. To increase uh, the stability a little bit, I simply added a few layers of uh, Lego bricks now. I ran out of the same color uh, Lego bricks, so it's not a little bit more colorful. And uh, um, yeah, um, it works. Um, so um, the distances are just right uh, like this, and uh, I'm getting a, a nice picture this way. So that is, an, I think, a nice and a very straightforward way of doing some... Uh, yeah, some amateur microscopy as well as to construct your own microscopes uh, and yeah, and, and I'm quite happy that this little project uh, worked out uh, so well. I don't know if you can see this, but it's a little bit blurry here um, on the corners on one side. And I also discovered why this is the case. It's because uh, the objective is wiggling a little bit. So if, I, if you just look, if I push the objective a little bit, then uh, the whole picture is also wiggling. So the objective down here must be straight. Um, Otherwise, uh, one half of the um, of the image is blurry and the other one is not. So, but I think that's that's not a real big problem because you can, uh, if you know what to do in order to get the image back straight again, and it's quite easy to just push the objective into into the right position again. And by, for example, moving the camera in and out, you can change the focus. So now you can see that the picture becomes more blurry the further I move it out. Okay. Okay, now the camera compensates its uh, exposure time a little bit. And when I put it back in again, it's back uh, back in focus. Takes some time for the camera to adjust again the exposure okay. time. So yeah, that was it. Um, I wish you I wish you a nice day and happy happy construction. All the best. Bye bye.